Yo, okay. Gabe. It's the Sunday Night Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. And we look ahead to the week ahead. That pretty much covers it all uh, as uh, we start to get down to the last days. We've only got 10 days, less than 10 days left in the month of April. The Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. Mm -hmm. The revolutionary Tempest weather system. It's the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet, and you can be part of it with this simple to install, run it from your mobile device weather station. Uh, the link is on the description to this podcast, and don't leave money on the table. Use the coupon code WINTER2324 because if you do, you will get 10% off. Yes, indeed. That's quite a buy. That's quite a bargain. Yes. Well, you had high clouds to deal with today with the uh, wave going by the south, so that uh, masked away some of the sunshine uh, for this uh, Sunday. I sat in gloom and doom until about 4 o'clock this afternoon with rain and temperatures in the 40s. It was just a nasty... <laughs> it rained very hard. It really didn't. It was just... This gray, miserable, you can't do anything outside. You can't go anywhere to, to do anything kind of a day. It was a, the weather was indifferent. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, the high clouds uh, kind of streamed up. Uh, uh, I, th I thought there'd be some high clouds, but I didn't even think it was going to be, you know, to the point where it would make it almost totally overcast in some places. Yeah, it, uh, I didn't get a chance really to be out too much today. I was mostly uh, indoors, but uh, yeah, it uh, it turned out to be kind of a you know kind of a kind of a day out there, uh, especially so if you were you know down across Long Island, New York, and uh, northeast Pen uh, northeast New Jersey. Uh, the clouds were a little thinner to the north, but uh, still not not exactly. Bad, but it, compared to what you went through today, Joe, I guess uh, uh, certainly better than. Better than what you went through. Oh, yeah. Welcome to everybody tonight on the chat board to the Sunday Night Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. I had the fireplace going this afternoon. Uh, that's how that's how nasty it felt here today. So hopefully you had a nice weekend. Welcome to those of you who are watching, uh, lurking in the background, as you like to do. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss us, because we're on Sunday through Thursday at 735 and if it uh, dictates, if there's a storm going on, we might throw in the occasional Friday and Saturday. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss us. And if you like the show, hit the like button. Because we like it when you hit the like button. So um, the week ahead to me, it looks like, well, two things. First off, uh, for the East anyway, uh, the first, uh, the the. the the week, for the most part, looks dry, with the exception of Wednesday when we get a cold front and some showers. Quick shot of chilly air for Thursday, then it moderates a bit on Friday. And then you have the other part of the country where you're going to see uh, probably a, a fairly strong, severe weather outbreak late this week in the uh, Great Plains and eventually in the Mississippi Valley. But none of that is coming to the east, uh, at least through the work week. It looks like uh, Joe that um, yeah the the and and let's let's uh, mention that the uh, the severe weather outbreak is so so uh, interesting for later in the week that the storm prediction center is actually going all the way out as far as um, days five and day six on their eight day experimental outlooks uh, for uh, outlining the threat for possible severe weather. So what we're talking about. <clears throat> excuse me, what we're talking about is for uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. They're already thinking for Thursday and Friday of this week that there could be some uh, significant severe conditions, mostly across uh, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, uh, Missouri, parts of Arkansas. That's the area. That's the region that will be looking for uh, possible, you know, uh, severe activity. For us here in the Northeast, however, that does not look like it's going to be the story. In fact, it looks like, uh, uh, relatively speaking, it'll be quiet. We do, as you mentioned, we, we, we're going to get into some uh, wet weather here probably by midweek, but it's probably going to be more of a, 
uh, a rainy or showery type of weather pattern as opposed right. to active. Yeah, there's no coastal lows to worry about. We're kind of in this zone, I think, right now where you know where we've moved. We're moving away from these coastal systems. Hopefully, I'm not jinxing it, uh, and more toward the frontal stuff, which probably means when we get into May, um, you know, maybe the uh, risks for severe weather will start to go up because usually, you know, in the Northeast usually severe weather is not a, a an, really an issue until you get to the latter part of May and you go into June. But we're we're, we're closing in on that uh, particular time of year. Uh, in the meantime. Uh, this is the 21st of April, and we do have, because the growing season has uh, begun, uh, we've got a lot of frost advisories up tonight for much of New Jersey, uh, for North Central and Northeast Connecticut, and to parts of Southeastern Massachusetts. In between, they don't have any rain. Uh, we've got frost advisories up for pretty much all of Southeast and South Central PA. Uh, down into uh, Maryland, Virginia, north and west of uh, Washington and Baltimore. And then uh, you, you got a gap because of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, it, but then on the other side of that, a uh, fairly large area from the southern Michigan, just about all of the Ohio and parts of Tennessee Valley, and down to me, uh, got uh, frost advisories up here in North Georgia. I didn't want to take a chance, so I took in um, Cleopatra and Ophelia and her other. Uh, carnivorous plant sisters that that I have, and brought them <laughs> and brought them inside, uh, along with my avocado trees, uh, which are you know did really well during the winter growing inside. But yeah, I brought them in just in case. And much of the West is pretty quiet. I mean, there's really not a whole lot going on. And 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 also with respect to the severe weather, it's going to be minimal for the first part of this week too. So we're kind of in this sort of quiet zone. Yeah, and. Uh... Again, as you mentioned, Joe, I mean, even I mean, for places that are in the you know tri-state area that are not underneath any kind of frost or freeze advisory, it's not that you're going to escape any of that. In fact, if anything, it may even get colder up into uh, the Hudson Valley. It's just that the uh, the growing season apparently has officially not begun. So as a result, there doesn't seem to be any need to issue any kind of uh, advisories for that. Uh, type of activity uh, but still it's going to be it's going to be pretty darn cold tonight I mean temperatures will be dropping down in many areas down into the 30s and uh, I'm just thinking about all of the uh, all of the uh, uh, creatures that were you know out in their element the last couple of weeks with the temperatures in the 70s or whatever like that's going to be a, a bit of a shock to them uh, and to the system when they uh, you know tomorrow morning with the temperatures so very, very cold. Well, I'm going from 82 for a high on, well, we had the three days this list past week where we went, made it to the low 80s. So Thursday's high was 82. I'm sorry, Friday's highs was, high was also 82. Yesterday's high was probably closer to 70. And then once the clouds rolled in, temperatures started falling uh, mid to late afternoon. And tomorrow morning, probably going to be down in the low and mid 30s here. So I'm actually sitting here with my sweatshirt on. I'm, I've been cold all day. I've already had the air, I've had the air air conditioning running. I took it off the heat mode, went to the AC. Now I'm going to have to switch it back to heat. Actually, I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to put on an extra blanket or two. Meanwhile, uh, on the satellite loop, you can see those high clouds are actually almost getting ready to pull out. The back edge uh, is not that far away. So uh, this is uh, thanks to a wave that moved across the Gulf states and uh, taking a track east northeast off the Carolinas and out to sea. But the high clouds, as Joey, Joe, and I described, uh, made it pretty far north. Meanwhile, it was a pretty gorgeous day in the Ohio Valley, up and down the Mississippi River Valley into Texas and Louisiana. All the cloudiness is out in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we have a uh, uh, um, little swirl here off the coast of Southern California. See, there's a patch of low cloudiness that's kind of been sitting there all day long. And uh, up in parts of the northern Rockies, we've got a little bit of moisture going on there. And as we check out the radar, uh, there's the latest radar actually has rain. It's all well offshore and well to the south and east. But with the rain, is, uh, even though the rain is far offshore, obviously the high clouds extend further back north and west. Still raining in much of eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. 
Also in parts in uh, coastal South Carolina, there's some strong thunderstorms moving across North Florida right now, but everybody else is sort of quieted down. Just some light showers way up in upstate New York and up in parts of Maine. And up in uh, the Rockies, uh, we're seeing uh, some mountain snow, valley rain showers in parts of Montana and Wyoming, and a little bit of light rain shower activity on up in Washington State. SPC, Joe, SPC, uh, that strong thunderstorm activity in North Florida inside an area of marginal risk for severe weather, but we don't have much more than that to worry about tonight. And uh, there's no, uh, the tornado risk is less than 2%, just about uh, in those, uh, in the marginal risk zone. Tomorrow, uh, we've got uh, much of uh, South Florida, not all of it, but much of it in the marginal risk for severe weather, and still less than 2% in all areas. And SPC could probably put their feet up for one more day on uh, when Tuesday into Wednesday, where there's a small area of marginal risk in parts of North Central and Northwest Texas, and that is uh, just about it. Uh, I actually mentioned the chance that there could be a thunderstorm with that front on Wednesday. Nothing severe, just you know, maybe a rumble or two of thunder uh, because of the strength of the upper low and the upper trough that's coming through. I, I guess the, I figured I might as well throw it in there. I, I wasn't 100% sure of it, but I, I figured I'd throw it in. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm not talking about I, when I was mentioning a few moments ago about uh, severe weather. I, I'm not talking about severe weather here on Wednesday. Oh, uh, yeah. clearly, clearly, I not. would not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I would not rule out the possibility of a rumble or two of thunder with that uh, frontal line that'll be moving on through for midweek, and then behind that, my goodness, it looks like a a growing area of high pressure that's going to be building in. The only thing I'm uh, it's unfortunate is that it might be coming. A little bit too soon. It looks like uh, improving weather, great weather for a later Thursday, fantastic weather for Friday, but then the high looks like it's going to be moving offshore and the weather may start deteriorating, hopefully slowly. But uh, after, you know, maybe a reasonable day on Saturday, we may go back to more uh, unsettled weather for the end of next weekend on Sunday. And you mentioned W, um, I'm sorry, you mentioned SPC. Uh, Day four is probability of too low, too low, but it's they've actually it started with the area that's in day five was in there day seven on Friday, so they've been they posted this already two days ago uh, with the long range. Uh, so uh, there it is. Um, we got the, the applied slight risk in parts of the Southern Plains for day five, and then for day six. Uh, a larger area in the uh, uh, areas from uh, east, the eastern half of Oklahoma, eastern half of Kansas, up into Iowa, western Illinois, uh, almost the same place, but not quite, but almost the same place of where they had the severe weather uh, during last week, and much of the state of Missouri and northwestern Arkansas. Uh, I, I was looking at some of the dynamics with all of this going down the road. wouldn't shock me at all. When we start to get this into the short range, you're going to see them start throwing up enhanced risk in 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 some areas. And uh, but that uh, we we've often said, and this is not a knock on Storm Prediction Center, but uh, uh, they tend to expand or they tend to accentuate uh, regions that they have initially outlined for possible severe weather as we get closer to the event. It could very well happen again. Uh, as we move into the middle and latter part of next week, as they're watching carefully that that one area of uh, activity over again, tech, uh, Oklahoma and uh, into uh, Missouri and Kansas and uh, those areas. So that'll be something interesting to watch. But the other thing is, Joe, I mean, as chilly as it is out there tonight, um, it, it looks like that once that uh, frontal line moves through here on Wednesday locally with showers and that big high begins to build in. Once we get on the other side of that high, it looks like it's going to be a very significant warming trend for the eastern United States. And so we're looking for the possibility that we could be seeing some, uh, some, some I wouldn't say record warmth, but uh, a big um, uh, a, a jump in the temperature after this uh, cool down that uh, is starting for this, this particular week coming up. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much in line with you on that. 
Meanwhile, the folks at WPC, the poor deers are having so much whatever. I don't know what what is has gone wrong there, but they're having still a lot of problems with uh, some of their products. Uh, the QPF products are working uh, now, uh, but uh, none of the snow maps are working. Uh, not that they'd be needed, but I'd be curious as to what they're doing with with uh, would be doing with stuff in the uh, in in the West in, in the Rockies. But we'll get to that momentarily. But in the meantime, uh, this is seven day rainfall amounts, and really not a whole lot in the East, uh, a quarter or even an inch or less in some cases. Uh, like in the Carolinas after tonight, no rain uh, being forecast for the next seven days. And across the Gulf states, uh, most of the Gulf states, uh, uh, no rain. Uh, you know, go a little further north, though, up into the uh, uh, middle Mississippi Valley, the Missouri Ri River Valley, uh, and uh, back down in parts of the southern plains where we have anywhere from a half inch to pockets of an inch and a half. But here, too, I mean, we, they're not seeing anything really truly excessive. In terms of rainfall amounts, um, half to three quarter inch amounts, maybe some one inch amounts in the next seven days in parts of the Pacific Northwest. A little bit of rain in California, a little bit of moisture in the Rockies. Some of that's going to be snow in the higher, higher in the higher ups and rain in the low, in the uh, lower elevations in the valleys. But really, it's uh, the first time in a long, long time where we don't have any flood issues going on anywhere, which is you know, it's, which is a very unusual thing to say. Just out of curiosity, let me see if I can pull up the, let's see, the snow forecast, just for laughs. Um, pull up a map of the Rockies for the next three days, so this will take us into 8 p.m. Wednesday. And, yeah, I mean, you can see how scant it is. Just a few minor areas where there's an inch or two uh, in, in uh, parts of uh, western Colorado, west of Denver. Uh, same if you go up up, up up 25, you go into Wyoming, there's a few patches here and there, and also into parts of Montana and up in Washington State in the Cascades. But it's really minimal stuff now. So, you know, we're pretty much done, I think, with regards to anything important with respect to uh, snowfall. So let's take a look at what the overall pattern is, is shaping up. And I'm going to bring up the upper air here. And take a look at uh, what we got and what we're going to. So, you know, we st still have a you know, busy trough in the east. You have this upper low that started out in the North Pole that's dropping down in the Hudson Bay. But as we pointed out last week, it's not dropping all the way south. Uh, but we're getting some influence of chilly air that's coming in uh, for, uh, came in for today and certainly for tonight. And then that trough's going to lift out. And you're going to have another arm come around. This is our cold front for Wednesday. That's not a half bad looking short wave. That's why, Joe, I, I, I threw in the chance that there could be a rumble or two of thunder when that front goes by. Quick shot of cold air. And then after that, we get into a bit of a ridge position here in the eastern part of the United States going through the weekend and into next week uh, with most of the troughing out. In the, even in the west, there's not a whole lot of troughing. But that ridge position certainly would argue Unless there's some sort of onshore flow going on someplace or local sea breeze issues or whatever, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would it would imply that things should warm up uh, nicely. The only question from in my mind is if there's anything from anything that develops in the west in the plains, if we get some kind of weather front to come through, uh, bringing some rain or showers at some point in that stretch. But um, your warm up is going to play out, I think. Yeah, and. Um... I, I would point out that it was about a year ago. In fact, I'm looking at the maps right now, or looking looking back on, on a year ago. Um, in fact, the date, <clears throat> excuse me, the date was a little more than a year ago. April 14th, it was a Friday in 2023. We had temperatures locally that reached to or around 90 degrees, not only for Friday the 14th, but also for uh, Saturday the 15th back in 2023. So a little over a year ago, and we were sweltering. We had I I remember that very well. How how very warm, if not downright hot, it was. And we haven't seen anything anywhere near that so far. Uh, and uh, indeed, we're we're going to be seeing a a, a spell of uh, rather chilly temperatures here the next day or two. But again, you're right. Uh, as we get toward the latter part of this week and into next weekend, the temperatures are going to warm up rather sharply, and uh, we'll we'll be back in to it 
an unseasonably mild, if not downright warm, weather yeah. regime by next week. All right, so here's the uh, issue with this week with respect to severe weather in, in the U.S. And if we take and just look at the close-up upper air, uh, by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, you can see there's energy that comes in off of California and moves eastward into the plains. I mean, this is really going to be the driver. This trough in the west is going to be the driver for severe weather in the plain states and eventually into the Mississippi Valley. And in the east, in the meantime, you know, you've got this whole front and short wave that comes through on Wednesday, nice little pink to that short wave, a little sharpness to it. Uh, and and then we get a quick shot of chilly air for Thursday and Thursday night, and then it get that warmer temperature start to settle in over the weekend. And then again, depending on how things behave in the West, will determine if we have uh, a couple of dry days followed by some showers or more than just a couple of dry days followed by some showers. So We'll take a look at what the surface is holding up. And, of course, tomorrow is no issue. The wave to the south is gone. In fact, you look at the much of the country, there's hardly any precip tomorrow anywhere uh, in, the, uh, in the U.S. And then Tuesday, uh, some kind of low that develops off the southeast coast way offshore, approaching front to the northwest. But Tuesday looks like a good day. You see temperatures moderate nicely with a southwest wind. Here comes the cold front for Wednesday. A low that moves across upstate New York into New England, maybe a shower or two, maybe a rumble or two of thunder, quick shot of cold air behind it. And while all that's going on, uh, low pressure starts to form uh, in, uh, in the plains. You see that 990 low on the Kansas-Colorado state line. And this is going to be our trigger starting, I think, for late Thursday and Thursday night in places like Texas and Oklahoma, maybe up into Kansas. And then on Friday, it's going to be Missouri, Arkansas, this is uh, Friday evening um, with a, a, a deepening low up in northwestern Iowa. So you can see where the setup is going to be uh, to the east of that. And I'll just highlight it here for you. So like this whole area here probably is going to be at risk. And meanwhile, here in the east, you got the high offshore. You've got the winds going to east and then southeast and south on Friday into Saturday. Uh, a little bit of a warm front being indicated here with the low that runs up into the western lakes. I don't know how real that is, but it would maybe argue for some showers next Saturday night. And then we wait for a stronger cold front, which looks like it may not get here until sometime Monday or Tuesday. So if the if the ridge in, in the upper atmosphere is strong enough, it would seem to suggest that, yeah, we will warm up. You know, we might have a little bit of shower, a little warm front has to go by. and. Then we have a couple of days before the cold front comes through. And courtesy of uh, Rob Friedowitz, uh, he is, I mentioned in the past, uh, really the uh, the number one guy in terms of uh, looking back at uh, weather in the tri-state area. He points something out very interesting, Joe. He said, since 1980, the average date of the first reading of 80 degrees or warmer at Central Park is today, April 21st a month later than the average date of the first reading in the, of, of 70 degrees or more. Now, this is about a week earlier. The, the, it, it turned out that between the years 1900 and 1979, the first 80-degree temperature that was registered at Central Park came um, not now, but a week later, uh, sometime around the 28th of, of April, and uh, two weeks earlier than 1869 to 1899. It has happened, 80 degrees. It has happened as early as March 13th. That was back in 1990, and as late as June 7th in 1924. I, I, have we hit 80 degrees? I think we have. Yeah, Central there was one day in the last two weeks, I think, there got to 80. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, you know, so but this is the date. The April the 21st is usually the average date when we see the first 80 degree reading and um well certainly it, it's it's not going to do that today it didn't do that today and it's not going to be doing that for uh, the next few days here with the uh unseasonable chill but then again nice warming trend later in the week into next weekend okay um trying to think if there's anything else i wanted to add there's really not a whole lot of weather going on and you know quite frankly you know, I, Joe and I, before we started the show tonight, both admitted that we were both um, really tired today. It's amazing when there's nothing to do, how tired you get. I mean, at least 
at least on my end of it. Well, I, I, for me, it was uh, a busy weekend because, uh, as I mentioned on uh, Thursday, we had the Northeast Astronomy Forum and uh, had a number of uh, special guests at the Rockland Community College. And uh, I did the introductions for the uh, or the kickoff of the forum yesterday. And today I did a talk at 1.30 recapping the events of the solar eclipse that I can't believe tomorrow is going to be two weeks since we had the eclipse. It seemed like, you know, like just a few days ago. Um, but, uh, you know, between doing, you know, running around and uh, talking to people and uh, all that, I mean, I came home today and I mean, I, I drove to the uh, forum on Friday, but Renato was the one who did the driving coming home. I, I actually fell asleep. I was, I was asleep most of the, most of the, uh, ride back, uh, today. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm bushed <laughs> and I can understand you're bushed too, Joe. So, uh, maybe it's, uh, okay with uh, everybody that we just simply, um, with not much weather to talk about much more than we've just talked about now, just uh, shut things down for tonight and hopefully yep. we'll have at it for tomorrow at uh, 735. So- so we'll hold off Ruler Jeopardy until tomorrow night. Yes, and sir. In the meantime, the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow, the revolutionary Tempest weather system that you can run on your mobile device and you can become part of the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. Link is on the description of this podcast. Coupon code is winter2324. Don't forget to use it because if you don't use it, you don't get Oh no! You won't get ten percent off. So you right. got to use it to get you it. You got to use it to get ten uh, the ten yeah. percent off. Exactly. All right. I'm gonna just snuggle up into a nice heavy blanket, watch another episode or two of Perry Mason, because uh, right now they oh they just finished the case of the howling dog, and I don't know what the next one was. Um, the oh the danger the case of the dangerous debutante. I think that's what it was. You know, one of these one of these fine days, I'm going to have to record. This is really very. We we don't really know why this is, but our dog, Mr. Sweeney, whenever the Bob Ross painting show comes on, and he has this very tranquil type theme music, mm-hmm. uh, beginning and the end. Whenever that music comes on, Joe, you talk about the case of the howling dog. Our dog howls literally. Ow! 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 You know, as soon as the as soon as the music starts, he goes into that. As soon as the music ends, he shuts up, and we don't understand why it is that that's the only piece of music where he reacts in that manner. And it's actually kind of funny. And uh, you know, if I get a chance, maybe uh, this week I'll uh, do a little short little video, and uh, we may be able to play it here on on Joe and Joe. But uh, it really is fun. In fact, at one point, uh, somebody even said, "says maybe you ought to." send it into, uh, you know, funniest home videos, because this, it is kind of hysterical. That, well, my, uh, my old cat used to love watching nature shows. He would stand on his hind legs and put his, you know, paws on the TV set, especially when it was with lions or anything, any, any kind of, any kind of cats. He would just kind of just, and he would just watch. My, uh, my dog, he, he watches... Because we watched David Attenborough on BBC here over the weekend. Because they they play all these planet Earths for like 10 hours in a row. And he just loves, he just sits there and he'll watch. And occasionally there'll be some, you know, animal gnat sounds going on. And you can see he's paying attention. It's probably, the certain music probably relaxes them. Or makes them, you know, excited. It's very funny. It it is very funny. My, My Yorkie... We had a Yorkie for almost 16 years. Yorkie took no interest whatsoever in television, but uh, uh, Mr. Sweeney, uh, which is kind of a, a terrier mix, he he notices what's going on on television. Sometimes we'll be watching and, you know, the, the, let's say CSI or NCIS and the, 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 the police siren will go off or something like that. And he'll, the ears will go up and he'll start barking. You know, he'll take note of it. Tell him, no, 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 it's, it's, it's at the TV. It's not anything that's going on outside or whatever. So... Maybe, anyway, maybe you have maybe Gazoo is in your in your house and he's seeing Gazoo. Because Bob Ross kind of looks like Gazoo, <laughs> right? In a way, he yeah. But it's only the music. I mean, you know, I it's, I I don't understand it, and uh, I'm hoping that you know, I hope it's not something where his ears, you know, where it hurts his ears, and that's why he howls. But 
But it's just very funny. As soon as, and as soon as he s- stops howling, you know, we both like applaud, like, yay! He sang. He said, you know, let's see. We'll see. Maybe I can get that on video and play it for her. All right. So play him, play him that, uh, play him the, 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 uh, the Joker and see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> the grand finale. finale the climax of my career <laughs> all right bye bye everybody have a great night hope your weekend was good and we'll see you tomorrow night at seven thirty-five. good night everybody <laughs>